Rated M for Mature. The zombies return and are deader than ever in part two of our Zombie Army 4 Enemy Guide. Hello and welcome to Rebellion. If you watched part one of this video and then decided to hit that big red juicy subscribe button, why not hit it now if you haven't already, you will know we've been very, very busy killing zombies. And not just your garden variety, run of the mill brain muncher, but some of the biggest, meanest and most devilishly cunning entrants of Hitler's undead army. But with there being just so many fiendish zombified foes in the game, we knew our work was far from done. So in this video, we'll offer our insights into how to best take on the remaining members of the Zombie Army 4 cast to help you become a grand master at taking on the undead. Without further ado, let's begin round two. Starting off our list is a look at two enemies which really force you to adapt how you play the game and you can let us know in the comments which of the two terrifies you more. The Spitter is an evolved version of the classic zombie soldier if like in Pokemon its zombie type was Swamp and that's where you'll be encountering a lot of these gooey green bad boys. Throughout the campaign, the Spitter likes to have cameos wherever there are bodies of water, slowly oozing out of their natural habitat to share their thoughts with you in the most verbal way possible. The green glow from their withering bodies will make them stand out in a crowd, but it's the projectile spit they hurl at you that will always have you keeping an eye out for them. If you get caught, your movement speed will be drastically slowed, which will be incredibly deadly if you're already surrounded by other enemies trying to take a swipe at you. Fortunately, they can be dispatched in the same way as any other classic zombie, but once they die, they will leave a brief plume of green smoke or gas, which we won't try to make any assumptions about, but best to avoid that. And speaking of avoiding things, we now turn our attention to one of the most feared zombies in the game, the Suicider. Without wanting to enter a philosophical argument about whether a zombie can actually commit suicide if it's already dead, the Suicider is actually one of the fastest and most deadly combatants in Hitler's entire undead army. These armless, dynamite-wearing, grenade-chomping cadavers will be present throughout the campaign and horde mode and have a nasty habit of charging at you with speed aplenty before blowing themselves up in your vicinity. The damage they do can be utterly lethal if you're already low on health, so it's best to take them out ASAP. Get as much distance between you and them as you can before taking the shot, although if you like to play for a bit of risk, you can position yourself close to them to activate their explosion and then run out of range before their finishing move. One particularly horrifying feature suiciders have is their piercing scream, which alerts you to their presence almost instantaneously. Use the sound of this scream to help position yourself in the best place possible to start taking them down from afar. A direct hit to the explosive strapped to their chest will blow them up immediately, but if your heart is racing too fast for such accuracy, a simple shot to one of their legs will cause them to stumble and hopefully damage any other zombies close to them. In conclusion then, in any battle, as soon as the suiciders show up, take them out first and take them out fast. Did you hear that? I could have sworn I heard something. Something in the vents, maybe. Oh, never mind, it was just a little <gasps> creeper. Perhaps the most menacing member of the Undead Horde you'll encounter throughout Zombie Army 4, the creeper is both sinister and scary at the same time. Crawling on all fours and never afraid to snarl at you with their horrifying dental work, their appearances range from tormenting to terrifying. They often travel in packs and have quick movement speed, so if you ever see a group of them approaching you from one end of the map, never be blasé about their presence and assume you will have bags of time to take your shots. They will catch up very quickly. Although their claw attacks only do a small amount of damage, just like with regular zombies, a whole pack of them will tear you into mincemeat within seconds, and ganging up on you and your squad mates is what they excel at. Best practice for taking them down is to always aim for the head, if you do have time to lay down some explosives or throw a grenade or two, then great. But when you encounter creepers most often in the campaign, you'll only have a few seconds to build up that distance. As with most enemies, close quarters is not recommended when taking creepers on, as their jump attack has considerable reach. So never feel shame if you have to do a bit of running away in order to get your shot lined up. Creepers on brutal mode, you say? No, I'm not scared. You are. Bring them on. Damn it, we got creepers! They say an army marches on its stomach, but frankly, if I'd been through Sandhurst officer training, I'd be deeply offended by that. 
It's the top brass that greases the wheels of any military machine, even if that machine's made of gone-off people meat. Enter the officers. The suicider general, zombie commander and necromancer are among the most powerful enemies in the game, despite being absolutely useless in a one-on-one -on -one fight. They don't even bother attacking you directly, instead acting as a modifier that changes the behaviour of their underlings. Suicider generals send waves of kamikaze flesh at you and zombie commanders enrage regular soldiers and give them much faster movement speed. And you can guess what necromancers do. In any event, what you need to do is the exact opposite of what the Zombie Bashers Field Manual usually says and get in very close, very quickly. All officers have exposed hearts, which you'll need to destroy to stop them getting back up when you shoot them and sending yet more waves of angry and or exploding subordinates at you. So run up to them, stomp them into the consistency so fine it'd fit through an aero press, clean boots, job done. Necromancers raising the dead. We've just covered the top brass of the Nazi zombie army, but there's still one extremely rare member of the high ranks yet to be mentioned, the Shadow Demon. The first you'll know about one of these sinister types being in the area is that you're being pulled along by some unseen force. Not the subtlest indication that something's awry really, but there you go. Eventually, the Shadow Demon will pull you all the way to his surprisingly well-dressed form and lay down the hurt with a really, really powerful melee attack using the force of its voice alone. Imagine how loud this thing must be shrieking to be exacting this much damage. It must be like a whole street full of toddlers' parties happening at once six inches from your eardrum. And you don't want that. So this is where teamwork comes in extra handy. If you're being pulled his way, a co-op pal can break his tractor beam by shooting him and saving you all the bother of that melee attack and its rather damaging effect on your health bar. Oh boy, okay, so bulging muscles that soak up bullets without any problem, check. Semi-invulnerability to mines, grenades and special weapons, check. Oh, and uh, killer buzzsaw that can slice a player in two, definite check. Yeah, it must be the butcher then. And for our money, this hulking collection of muscle and meat is by far the most intimidating special you'll encounter. Trying to put into words the sheer terror the Butcher's presence adds to the battle would be like trying to decide how best you wanted your character to go. Machine gunned, burnt or bustled out of existence. It's an impossible decision, isn't it? But we wouldn't be much use here at Rebellion if we didn't have some handy pointers for you. So first thing to say, the Butcher is a bullet sponge, pure and simple. If you think you can take him on with a simple pistol, then good luck to you. But you'll be done in a couple of hours or so. And that's if the Butcher doesn't get you first, which he definitely will. Sporting a deadly buzzsaw which haunts you with its incessant whirring, the Butcher's weapon should be treated with the utmost caution. If one of his balletic swings hits you, then you're going to be in trouble fast. Giving his huge amounts of health, the best tactic when taking on a Butcher is to keep as much distance as possible and then get you and your teammates, if you have any, to make him the top priority. Always aim for the head and concentrate your fire, and if you can, try to use the map so that you can create a bottleneck for the Butcher to have to march through. Mines and grenades will not slow down the Butcher by much at all, so that concentration of fire is your best bet here. As with the Flamer and the Gunner, the Butcher leaves behind grenades after you've defeated him, as well as his trusty buzzsaw, which gives you the perfect opportunity to get up close to those remaining zombies on the field. But if you're quick enough, you can use that very same bus saw on the Butcher himself if you manage to stagger him mid-combat. Now there is some poetic justice. If the grating sound of the Butcher's buzzsaw isn't enough to make you want to cover your ears and hide, then perhaps another enemy on our list can do that job. The Screamer. As the name implies, the Screamer is a special zombie that, well, I mean he screams. Seen here in all his gory glory in the game's main menu, this blind enemy definitely has a face for radio, and has a nasty habit of hacking and slashing his prey to death. Sound is the name of the game here, so a different approach will be required if you're to avoid the screamer's deadly clutches. Firstly, if you do spot one in the field, hit that crouch button immediately. Crouching is the only form of movement he can't hear. If you do accidentally tickle the sensitive eardrums, then run for the hills as quickly as you can. The screamer will follow you for a brief period and then reset 
but if you were too close when alerting it to your presence, the screamer's piercing shriek will cause your character to freeze up for a few seconds, leaving you vulnerable to its attack. It's calling for backup. If you and your squad are taking on a screamer together, then the large yellow bumps on its back are where to unload your clip. But just make sure you do it fast. The screamer may look a bit flimsy next to other characters like the butcher, but he can soak up tons of damage while he shrieks and slashes his way towards you. There is one quick solution for taking one out, however. If you have a melee kill stored up, then you can pounce on a screamer's back and finish it off quickly, if you're as quiet as a church mouse beforehand, of course. Stay quiet. There we are then, your field guide to the various screaming, shambling and sometimes stoically silent enemies to be found in Zombie Army 4. But what about the tanks and armoured cars and Hitlers, you may be saying? If you'd like even more of a breakdown, including the aforementioned vehicles and despots, let us know in the comments below. Until next time, leave the screamers alone. Trust us, it is not worth it.